Hello, Arthur here. The archipelago of Okinawa in Japan is home to the world's largest population of centenarians. Okinawa is one of many blue zones located throughout the world. The idea of living a long and healthy life sounds great. The idea of living to 100 or 110 sounds even better. But could we live longer? Could we live to 200, 500, or even a thousand years? The desire to live forever has been around for centuries. But you may be surprised to know that there are serious scientists looking into this as we speak. Aubrey de Grey is the founder of SENS, an organisation that believes ageing is one of the biggest risk factors for diseases that cause death in humans, such as cancer and Alzheimer's. Ageing is a result of the accumulation of damage in the body caused by the body's normal operations. De Grey lists seven major types of damage and has proposed methods of reversing and preventing the effects of these damage. If you want to learn more about De Grey's research and the SENS Foundation, check the links in the description. Ray Kurzweil predicts that within the next 20 years, humans will have developed nanobots that will enter our bodies and carry out the function of our blood cells 1,000 times more effectively, repairing damaged tissue and allowing us to live forever. He has also predicted many of our modern technological advances decades in advance. Every time one of your cells divides, it copies its chromosomes. And every time the chromosomes are copied, they lose tiny bits of DNA at the end. This could lead to disastrous results if it weren't for long segments of DNA called telomeres. Each time the cell divides, the telomeres shorten, meaning that eventually, after a certain number of divisions, the telomere will be gone completely. At this point, the cell will usually undergo cell death. But if the cell doesn't contain enough proteins that activate program cell death, the cell will stick around and become senescent. Senescent cells can damage tissue around them, and as you get older, more and more of them are present in your body. So if these are the cause of ageing, how do you remove these cells from the body and prevent or reverse ageing? One proposed way of reversing ageing is by lengthening the telomeres. Scientists have found that by doing this in mice, they could actually extend the li mice's lifespan and reverse ageing. The downside of doing this in humans, however, is that lengthening telomeres can cause cancer. So a compromise would have to be made between lengthening them just enough to reverse ageing, but not so much as to cause cancer. Another potential cure for ageing is NAD+. As we age, the amount of NAD plus in our cells goes down, which has been linked to many diseases such as skin cancer and heart disease. Scientists have found that certain molecules will turn into NAD plus when inside cells. And when these protein molecules were injected into mice, the mice had a higher ability to repair damage and lived slightly longer. Walter Longo has said that if we could reverse ageing in humans only half as effectively as we have in mice, we could extend the human lifespan by around 30 years. Walter Longo says that fasting and eating a special diet can help slow the rate of ageing humans. So now that we have seen 
that it is possible to reverse ageing and that it could become possible in our lifetimes. The question is, if we can do it, should we? Is it moral to do so? What some have said is that without humans dying, the problem of overpopulation will get worse. However, population growth is expected to slow down after 2050 and eventually plateau after 2100. Furthermore, in the next few centuries, mankind is expected to colonise and eventually terraform other worlds in our solar system, allowing more space and resources for more humans. And there have even been proposed methods for living in parts of our planet that have so far remained uninhabited. Some have said that death is natural and trying to cheat it is wrong. However, just because something is natural does not mean it's good. And if we applied this argument to everything, we would still be stuck in the Stone Age. All human advancements, to some degree, have been about controlling nature. Others have said that without people dying to make way for new generations, no progress in society could take place. However, people can and do change their minds. And you could just as easily argue that the same fear of change is behind their arguments. Death and aging has been a part of human life for millennia, and so it should remain that way. Those who advocate for defeating aging have said that people may actually take care of the planet more if they knew they were still going to be alive. Life extinction advocates have also stated that the goal of modern medicine is already life extension, but that doctors are going about it in a very counterproductive way, and that having people living longer and healthier lives would improve quality of life and boost the economy. So, as we have seen, it is indeed possible to extend our own lives, and there are benefits to doing so. But what do you think? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. And thanks for watching.